and we'll see how to activate Anisim on our iPhone and also how to set it up after we've already installed it. First of all, when we start up our iPhone, if it's just now starting, if we're turning it on for the first time, the most important thing is to have a Wi-Fi network activated. Whatever the case, you need a Wi-Fi network activated or if someone can turn on their data and let us connect to their network, that works too. Once we have the network connected, we can move on to the step-by-step -step process. For this occasion, we're going to go directly to our settings at the top right and here i have it in english but mainly just follow the icons and well here we're gonna enter the section that says cellular here the one with this network like icon and we simply tap there i already have my eSIM set up here but i'm gonna show you how you would set up yours once you're inside your phone here to add it just notice that right here there's an option that says add eSIM there you simply tap add and here if we have an iphone nearby this will pop up just like it did for me your sim card is not supported that's because i just switched from another iphone to this one and that iphone has a sim card that isn't an eSIM and it doesn't have the option to activate one it's a physical sim card so it won't work for me but if we just tap on other options that's where we actually find the options that might work for us now we have two options the first one is to transfer from a nearby iphone so simply if there's another iphone let's say we're switching phones before selling it or giving it to someone else what we do is transfer all the data including the sim card so without needing to scan it again or anything like that we simply transfer it from there to the new iphone and just tap on transfer from a nearby iphone so well in that case we just need to have it nearby simply connect it or place it on top or underneath and the process will automatically start if this option isn't available because we don't have another iphone because we've already given it away sold it or simply don't have it then we have a second option which is to use a qr code the qr code is something that must be provided by the phone company we have contracted with so we tap on use qr code and a camera will automatically be enabled which uh well in this case i have it covered but i'll show you there it is that's the camera as you can see and what would happen then is that we could scan the code and that's it we simply scan it and it will be configured automatically but if we don't have the QR code either, we might need to do it as it says below, where it says enter details manually, and it asks us for this information here. Here we have the perfect example, and this is literally how the phone company could send us the QR code. For example, they send us this QR code, and then we just scan it, and we can directly get our eSIM. But if it doesn't work for us, or we don't have it, we would have this information that appears just below, which is this SMDP plus address. Here we would have the configuration, or the link in this case, the UR land, then the activation code. Don't try to use this here, because this is simply information that was uploaded to this page is just for reference so once we have that information here we would have the option as you remember we would have this smdp plus address then the activation code and this confirmation code is actually not necessary it's completely optional now if you've already done this and you're still getting an error and it keeps bothering you and won't let you connect then in that case you would have to go directly to the phone company or call them and ask what's going on because at that point it wouldn't really be an iphone issue but rather a problem with the phone company you have contracted now once it shows up as configured or let's say the eSIM appears as linked you'll see this over here well this part about cellular data for personal uses might not show up because it appears for me since i've been using the eSIM for a while so i already have data usage or mobile data consumption but if you're just starting out you'll see this part up here now let's go through them one by one this cellular data is basically the option we have to enable our mobile data and why does it show that we can deactivate it or activate other lines because precisely one of the advantages of eSIMs is that we could have several eSIMs at the same time using one just for calls, another just for data, and so on. This way you can set up different lines, whether for your business, personal use, family members, and so on. Now, before we continue, remember that eSIM functionality is only available for iPhone XS, XS Max, XR, or a later version that enables or supports the eSIM option. Because you could have an iPhone, for example, a 14, but with a physical SIM, and if you have a physical SIM, then you absolutely have to use a physical SIM card. If you have an eSIM, then it wouldn't work for you. Now, 
after we've chosen here which function we have for example i have two activated one is personal and the other is primary in this case the one i use for everything is the personal one so now we would have the possibility to have this here the personal hotspot is to enable our connection point so that other people can connect to our wi-fi or our mobile data then uh, in default voice line uh, we also obviously have to select which line we want to use so in my case it's also personal here it's basically so that people can call us so that calls can come in that would be the one we use by default this doesn't mean that uh, we won't receive calls from the other line what it means is that for example when i make a call the call will automatically go out from the line i have selected here and if for example i connect to mobile data it doesn't mean that if both sim cards have mobile data or both e-sims have mobile data i won't be able to use one or the other number it means that I can switch and choose which one I want to use depending on the moment. Maybe I'm in a city where one carrier offers better data than another and I can switch between them to test them out. Then here under eSIMs, all the eSIMs we have available for use will appear. So in my case, we have the primary one here, which is currently disabled because I don't have any SIM assigned to it. Then we have the personal option. I already selected this directly. I mean, I chose for this one to be labeled as personal because if we want, we can also choose different names. For example, a custom name, if that's what we want to call it. Like if this is that eSIM card, for example, and I just leave it like that. Or if not, you can choose any of the options above. Like this is the eSIM card or the business eSIM, the mobile data eSIM, the eSIM for my personal number, uh, the primary or main eSIM, the secondary eSIM, or the eSIM I use for travel. As you can see there, it says travel. So. I can assign different names. Really, the name doesn't actually change anything about how the eSIM is used. It's simply so I can organize myself better. And then here, once we have the eSIM set up, all of these will appear. If we want to enable the eSIM, we need to have this option enabled, which is the second one here, in order to use the eSIM, whether it's for calls, data, etc. Next, network selection, it's recommended to leave this on automatic. If you see options appear, also leave it on automatic because the idea is for it to connect to the best available network or carrier. Next, here you'll see the option for my number, but in my case is not available. What would appear here is basically your phone number. In my case, my carrier, which is Tigo, doesn't have this available. And then we have general options, which aren't really related to the eSIM, but rather to the phone settings, like the ability to make calls over Wi-Fi. It's not that we're going to make calls over the internet, but rather that the Wi-Fi will provide support to make calls more stable so if we want we can enable this option also remember that for the call to be optimal the wi-fi signal needs to be strong next here we have the option to make calls on other devices so this means that if we have our icloud account on other iphones we can even make calls from the same phone number Honestly, this is really useful if you have multiple devices. Next, voice and data. This is basically where you choose the network you want to use for browsing. In my case, I select 5G. It's not available throughout my entire city, but at least I have it. And if connecting to 5G bothers you, you can force your phone to connect to 4G, which in this case doesn't appear as 4G, but as LTE, this is really helpful if you have issues, as I mentioned, with a 5G network or something like that. And then we have data mode which is basically whether it uses the maximum amount of data available or if it should be limited so you don't run out of all your available gigabytes too quickly. And after that, there are just more general settings. Well, friends, that's it for this video. These are all the eSIM settings, how to link it, how it works and several other things. That said, I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. See you next time. Bye bye.